Okay, so here I put together just a little montage of all the seed robin clips that I happen to save. Um, caught a lot more than this throughout the season, and they seem to be at a pretty high population right now. Um, I've never targeted them. Uh, they seem to be just mixed in with the fluke, porgy, bottom fishing, wherever you go. Uh, although, for this catch and cook, it did take me two trips to catch one sea robin, which is, I guess, just how it goes. Um, earlier in the season, I was catching these pretty big specimens in Raritan Bay. Uh, later on, they got a little bit smaller. Um, in any case, sea robin is a highly prized uh, culinary species. All throughout Europe, France, and Italy. The reason is they make the cleanest stock. Um, if you're going to do any kind of a fish stew or a seafood soup, um, the classic bouillabaisse, base, it's, it's based around species uh, they call Gurnard in Europe. And um, that is our Your sea robin. We have a couple of different species here. Uh, these big orange crush ones inshore and a slightly smaller drab olive colored sea robin offshore. So I've only cooked with these orange guys. And um, yeah, they, they have uh, flaky white flesh, but the real prize is their head and their racks. Um, Fluke Racks also makes a very nice stock, but Sea Robin just gives it that extra depth and richness uh, that you really don't find with any other local species. So, in this Catch and Cook, we're going to do a sort of a pared down uh, Mediterranean style seafood stew. Um, it's more technique driven than the other dishes I've done, at least with fish, but it's definitely worth it. Um, it's, it's, these are steps that you would use to make any kind of soup, any kind of sauce. And by the way, that was a massive sea robin, probably the biggest one I've caught, but I failed to land. And this one, I believe, is the one that I took home. Um... They're a little bit tricky to bleed. I've, I've yet to find a good way to reliably get all the blood out. Um, anyway, this one's like a mediocre size. And I wish I had a pair of them. But anyway, that's, that's what the fish guys gave me that day. So okay, this is the next day. It was bled and put on ice. Now, this is a standard method of skinning a sea robin and you you end up with the tail now i added an extra step because i didn't want the collar um section for the soup so here you see me break away the top of the head and then you you take the heel of your knife you press it down against the backbone and you just rip the skin off um, the guts go Dude, along with it, ridiculous. and now you're left with this kind of drumstick. Okay. It's, it's really yeah, similar it's to how you skin blowfish. Um, and now the drumstick you can just toss on the grill. Now the collar and the guts on the left, we're going to throw out the head and the center rack with the fillets. Uh, we're obviously good. going to keep. So we're going to clean the head. There's like a... There's some gills in there. So you just pull, you just pull those out. Nice knife, right? um, yeah, that yeah, little pretty, backbone yeah. piece we're gonna keep as well. Yeah. And yeah, basically you make the cut. You sever the the spine right behind the head, and um, don't cut all the way through. So anyway, these are the pieces that are going to form the base of our seafood stew. And um, just kind of keep them wrapped up in dry paper towels. Um, 
the camera angle here is going to go a little haywire, but basically I'm filleting the drumstick. So I'm cutting on both sides, uh, behind the ribs, down to the backbone, and then lifting it off the backbone. Um, I'm not cutting through the ribs. I'm going to bend the fillet knife over the rib cage, and you'll kind of see a better angle when I take the other side off. So here, you see I put tension on the knife, on the tip of the knife, so the blade curves around the backbone. Then you get two little strips. And the center rack, obviously, we're going to use for stock as well. Okay, so that is that is the prize. Now, the meat we're going to wrap in paper towels and put it on ice or in the fridge. Um, that's going to be part of the dish too. So here is the vegetable mirepoix. Um, it's your basic celery, carrots, onion. Uh, just a small rough dice is fine. You want all your vegetable pieces to be roughly the same size so they cook evenly but you don't have to make uh, perfect dices uh, generally speaking the mirepoix ratio for classic french cooking is uh, one part carrot and celery to two parts onion uh, here i have a just a random bulb of fennel so i'm gonna put a few ounces of that in uh, this is a yellow onion when you're cooking you want to use yellow onions you don't want to use Spanish or white or God forbid um, red onions you know th those are for salads yellow onions have much deeper flavor and now I'm also going to put a couple bulbs of um, shallots in there as well And once again, everything is just a rough, small dice. All of this is going to be strained out, so it doesn't really matter. You don't need any knife skills yeah, here. Okay, and a small knob of ginger, uh, roughly chopped. After this is some garlic. And two or three bay leaves. You can use fresh or dry, it doesn't matter. The garlic we're gonna pound through. Um, you almost always wanna crush your garlic instead of just slicing it up. Okay, now we're also going to use some shrimp, and the key here are the shrimp heads. Um, the heads are going to roast along with the sea robin rack. Uh, here we're just going to devein the shrimp really quickly. And the third protein ingredient are mussels. Um, Anyway, you can go crazy. You can use uh, scallops and um, squid. S squid is actually a good, you know, I, I, if I thought of it, I would have included it in this dish. So you want a hot roasting pan. Um, I, I'm using grapeseed oil and just a drizzle of olive oil. And you lay your sea robin pieces in. So all the bones, the head, uh, not the fillets. And here we're starting to build the, the base of the soup. Um, so you want to roast these bones until there's some color and then we're going to roast the shrimp heads and then finally the mirepoix. Um, 
season as you go. So salt, pepper, every step of the way. Every time you add something new to the pan, you want to season it. Uh, so here the shrimp heads go in. Once the shrimp heads get a little color, there you go, just more salt. So once there's some color on the shrimp and the sea robin, we're going to put in our vegetables. We're going to season them um, and coat everything with oil and just roast them for maybe five minutes. Um, you don't want too much color, but you want a little bit of color. And once that's achieved, uh, we're going to add a, a little bit of tomato paste. I think it's maybe like a tablespoon total. And anytime you see tomato paste in a recipe, you have to cook it out in fat. Um, you're never going to add tomato paste at the end of a sauce or a soup, you know, because then it's just going to be raw. Um, water is limited by its boiling temperature. So when you roast tomato paste in a hot pan with oil or fat, that, that's how you're going to really achieve that deep, complex flavor. Now there's a little bit of fond. Um, fond is just stuff that gets stuck on the bottom bottom of the pan, and we deglaze with maybe a cup and a half of white wine. Um, the wine doesn't really matter. Anything dry um, that's drinkable, you know, like ten, twelve dollar bottle of white wine is fine. And with the alcohol, just like the tomato paste, we're gonna cook out. Which means, you know, right now, if you smell it, it's going to smell like raw alcohol. And then after two or three minutes, it's going to start smelling much sweeter. And that's the stage you want to bring it to. So now we add our bay leaves. And this whole process is sort of a standard um, foundation for just many, many soups and stocks. Um, and here we were, we're transferring it to a soup pot, which has about four or five cups of boiling water. And we're also going to just rinse out the roasting pan. Um, just get all that flavor into the soup pot. Okay, so here we are going to sort of rapidly boil this stock for no more than 20 minutes. And this is a departure from the classic French uh, fish stock. Like if you're doing a classically French bouillabaisse, you would use a fumet, which is a slowly, barely simmered fish stock with a bottle of white wine, and that's not what we're doing here. So the mussels go in, uh, with another oh, yeah, cup of white wine okay. and once they open they're done so here we're going to skim some of the foam off you want to put half of your pot over the flame and that way the boiling action is going to push all the scum and foam to one side so it's easier for you to skim there's a little tip but in any case this sort of new method of cooking fish soups and stocks you know just just keep it at a rapid simmer rapid boil um, it really retains the freshness you know a a classic french fume is um i was never a big fan of it that's that's how i train um to cook but it always tasted like a wine whiny fish flavored broth which um, it's not it's, it's, it's not that appealing. So anyway, we're gonna put half the mussel juice into the stock pot, and most of these mussels are not gonna be used in the dish. We're gonna take maybe a dozen. And I like to serve most mussel dishes um, 
any dish that has mussels in it just on the half shell because mussels take up so much room and um, you just get a cleaner presentation that way. Uh, the rest of those mussels, the cameraman, my cousin Mark, is going to eat one-handed while he's shooting the rest of this video. Um, anyway, here we're just going to strain out the bay leaves and the shrimp heads. We're going to leave some of the other stuff behind and we're going to blitz it with a hand blender. Uh, that's an optional step. It just gives a little bit more body to the stock. Uh, now, traditionally, you would use a food mill, and you know that that will give you a really smooth um, consistency. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to give it a quick blend and strain it. So I'm pouring everything into a large bowl so it's easier to work with. Rinse the pot off and strain it directly back into the pot. Now all this stuff that is um, in the strainer, you don't want to force it through. Just want to gently tap the side of the strainer and yeah, because if you force it through, you know, that stuff is going to go through the strainer and you don't want that your finished product. A little bit of body. Yeah. Okay, so you see the tomato paste gave the stock a really nice color. Now we're going to saute the sea robin fillets. Uh, some grapeseed oil, we salt pepper the first side, the presentation side, which is usually the bone side. And really hot pan, really high heat. You want to cook it maybe 80% on the first side. Uh, salt pepper the other side as well, and then just turn it. Yeah, you can see how nice the meat looks. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's an excellent eating fish. We're going to finish roasting it off the heat. And here we're going to drop our shrimp in. Uh, now the stock is at a low simmer. And this is when you would put in your scallops and your squid if you're using it. Um, I'm seasoning the broth with just a touch of lemon juice. Okay, so here's plating. Um, Shrimp will go on the bottom. We ladle some broth, some mussels on top, and then the sea robin fillets on top. Once again, I, I wish I had more than one small sea robin, but what can you do? Now you see if I kept the mussels whole, how much room is you know it's gonna take up. Just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, spoon more broth over everything now, you know, this broth is it's deep it's complex It's rich and that's because we took the time to really build up those flavors and we're using a very um, Purpose-built fish for this dish and we're gonna end with just a little bit of chopped parsley a little bit of emerald um, Flat leaf parsley, never curly parsley. Curly parsley is for cruise ships. And anyway, clean the rim of the plate with a damp paper towel, and that's the dish. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you like what you see, please subscribe.